from the station that's on your side. News 12, first at four continues. Welcome back. Richmond County school officials going forward now with plans to rezone schools in the district. That will affect students at six different schools. That's why Real Rio is here live in the studio with how these changes will affect thousands of students in the district. Will? Well, this is the district working to put what seems like moving pu puzzle pieces together as the district continues to change every year. They call it right-sizing, and they approved their right-sizing plan to help deal with the growing school population. And the classrooms become more crowded. Plans like these are designed to even out that school population. And the plan here is they want to take students from Haynes Elementary and those from Wheelis Road who would normally go to Murphy Middle School and send them to Richmond Hill instead. This would help reduce the Murphy's capacity by 28%. They also plan to move two neighborhood groups from Diamond Lakes Elementary to Willis Foreman, reducing capacity at Diamond Lakes by 20%. The board also pushed forward a plan to move C.T. Walker Magnet School from K-8 to K-5, making families choose a different magnet school. The district says that this will help school overcrowding, transportation, and resource allocation. I think it's a good thing, but I know with the pandemic, it's, it's even more of an important thing. Um, it's just making sure that when we, we move these students, that the resources go with them. And Richmond County says these changes will begin at the beginning of the next school year. Coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock, this isn't the first time we've seen this happen. We break down how often something like this happens in our school districts. Well, thanks very much. Let's head outside now for a quick look around as we check in. 40s before midnight for us. And once again, by tomorrow morning, it is going to be a chilly start. Some of our counties could be waking up to some frost. We'll have much more on that threat coming up in your first alert forecast. A local case of alleged child abuse, 21-year-old Michael Hampton facing child cruelty charges in connection with an injured one-year-old. Richmond County Sheriff's Office say, says the one-year-old is in the ICU at AU Medical this afternoon. The child has bleeding on the brain, a burn on his leg. Deputies say Hampton grabbed the child, causing their neck to snap backwards. They also say Hampton burned the child's leg with a lighter. Georgia six hot boxes. South Carolina lawmakers approving raises for teachers and state employees. They're going to get a 2% raise. Those state employees will. And teachers, they're getting a $1,000 pay bump. Lawmakers also have an additional $1.7 billion of extra money to spend this fiscal year. That money will be divided and spent on local needs and communities all across the state. Governor McMaster says $12 million in gear funds will go to the State Department of Juvenile Justice. That will be used to expand juvenile delinquency prevention programs. They're going to target students who are at highest risk of dropping out of school or becoming a teenage offender. Mentorship and therapy programs will also be set up to help those students. Governor McMaster says it's important to help these students because their situations are not always their fault. A lot of our young people, through no fault of their own, are in situations where they need guidance and need some help, and we are going to offer that. That's the best, best investment that we can make. The money will also be used to set up summer and after-school programs for at-risk middle schoolers. Free college could become a reality. Democrats introducing a bill in Congress that would make tuition free at all community colleges and trade schools. Right now, President Biden is still deciding on if and how much student loan debt he will clear for college grads. Some Democrats have called for anywhere from ten to $50,000 to be cleared. Right now, 44 million Americans have a total of $1.7 trillion in student loan debt. Also today, a lab in Raleigh offering tests to see if your vaccine shot works. The test would have to be done at least two to three weeks after your last vaccine dose. When you get COVID, your body develops antibodies, but the vaccine creates spike proteins, and that's what this test will look for. Officials from the lab say the test is not required, but could be encouraging for people who are skeptical. There's no requirement for this test, but really, I think more peace of mind. I had the vaccine, I took the spike antibody test, and I see that I did have an immune response to it, that I did develop the antibodies, so I can have a certain degree of confidence she says her lab tests are different than regular antibody tests. If you're still looking to get your vaccine, there are several options coming up. Tomorrow, AU Health has a clinic at Washington Square. That'll be open from 1 to 4.30. In South Carolina, DHEC is hosting a clinic at the Aiken County Health Department. That's from 9 to 4 o'clock. And on Friday, AU Health is hosting a clinic at Aiken Tech from 9 to 4.30. You'll need an appointment for all three clinics, and we have the link to register on our website. 
The city of Augusta announcing their finalist for the Augusta Fire Chief position. That's Antonio Burden. Currently, Burden works as the Deputy Chief of Professional Services and Community Risk Reduction in DeKalb County. Augusta has not had a permanent fire chief since December. Former Chief Chris James resigned over morale and training concerns. Southwest Georgia says they're seeing an increase in opioid overdoses. Officials say they're doing their best to distribute Narcan nasal spray, but even the life-saving medication doesn't always work. Emergency medical workers say the spray has been more effective than treatments they had available in the past. Still, Daughtery County Coroner says it's getting tougher every day to see these people die from overdoses. Just today, just today, I found out six overdoses. So my heart go out to the family that have lost loved one because of the drug. So here at home, the Columbia County Sheriff's Office is hosting its drug take-back event. It's coming up on Saturday. You can drop off old or unused medications from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. It is a better option than flushing them because those chemicals do end up in our water supply. There will be two locations to doing this, Kroger and Grovetown on Lewiston Road and the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. That will be the substation there. Uber announcing new rules for its riders and drivers. They say drivers should keep those doors locked until the rider has a mask on. They also encourage drivers to use their no mask cancellation option. And during the ride, if a rider does take off their mask, drivers can drop off the rider at the nearest public location. Riders can also report drivers who are not wearing a mask. Charlie Norwood's VA nursing resume event is still going on. It's for nursing professionals looking for a VA career. Your last chance to drop off your resume will be from 6 to 7.30 tonight. You can do that at the Charlie Norwood VA Medical Center. Just drop it off at the visitor's entrance near the flagpole circular drive. And we've told you about these invasive zebra mussels showing up on moss balls in stores, and now they're showing up in Georgia waters. They were found on a boat in Social Circle about an hour and a half west of us. Officials say the invasive species can have damaging effects on our water and economy. The mussels can also damage a boat's water intake. Officials urge boat owners to be on the lookout for these mussels stuck on the bottom or side of your boat. They ask that you remove the mussels and do your best to not transfer them to other states. Augusta is home to a lot of history and museums to hold it, but the Military Museum at Fort Gordon is looking for a new home. They have rare photos, equipment, and memorabilia from wars dating back to the Civil War. They even have a phone once used by Hitler, but they're in danger of losing it all. The museum on post lost all of its space at Fort Gordon about a year ago, and now they're working to get a new building, but they need help with funding and with awareness. Artifacts really, they're military specific, but they're also Fort Gordon specific. So we're trying to really keep them in the area. And and the benefit also, if we get to move them off post, is the community at large will have much more access to them than what was on when it was on Fort Gordon. She says they actually have found a new location outside Gate One, but they still need help from the community to purchase the building that's already there. Coming up, the murder conviction of Derek Chauvin, bringing police reform to the forefront. We're going to take a look at solutions lawmakers on Capitol Hill are coming up with now. Riley. Well, we have red flag warnings in effect the rest of this evening. Frost advisories tomorrow morning and then severe weather potential on Saturday. Lots to talk about in your first alert forecast next. Getting back to that story now about the Derek Chauvin uh, verdict yesterday, sparking new efforts from lawmakers in Washington to address police reform. And while Demo Democrats and Republicans agree on things like more body camera use, there are still several issues they don't. Natalie Brand is breaking this all down for us. From the family of George Floyd. We're going to fight for everybody. To the President of the United States. Can't stop here. Recognition that Tuesday's guilty verdict for former police officer Derek Chauvin is just step one. We have to focus on transforming policing in the United States. California Congresswoman Karen Bass is among those leading efforts on federal police reform legislation. The bill is passed. Just last month, the House passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. It would ban chokeholds and some no-knock warrants and prohibit racial and religious profiling. But overhauling qualified immunity protections for police, which would make it easier to hold officers accountable in court, has been a non-starter for Senate Republicans. 
Republican Senator Tim Scott says he's working on an alternative proposal on qualified immunity that would put more burden on police departments instead of individual officers. I'm sure he's updated a few things based on uh, more current events, uh, but uh, expect to see a really good bill coming out soon. At least 319 people in the U.S. have been killed by police so far this year, according to MappingPoliceViolence.org. The group says in recent years, the vast majority did not result in charges against the officer. I think it's time for us to have a commission to take a deep dive, deep look, uh, evidence-based approach to how we imagine policing for the next uh, couple of hundred years. Miami Police Chief Art Acevedo is calling on President Biden to launch a national oversight commission that he promised during the campaign. The White House says it will focus on legislation instead. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Also this afternoon, South Carolina DNR warning people to stay away from the turkey nest. They say it's not just, not a bad, not just a bad idea to rob the nest. It is also an illegal idea to rob a turkey nest, which I didn't realize. Me neither. Just don't do it, though. They say if you see a nest with no turkey, not to worry. The turkeys don't come back to the nest to sit on the eggs until they finish laying all of their eggs for that batch. You learn something new every day. <laughs> you do. The agency says if you do take the egg and hatch it, the turkey likely will not survive because all that knowledge on how to live comes from the mother turkey, so leave the nest alone, they Please say. Alone. Leave it for their mama. So when she was nine, she grew a 40-pound cabbage, donated that to a soup kitchen. Now she has a nonprofit that feeds families all across the country. How she's feeding and teaching, coming up, first and four. For 10 years, the company blamed for deplorable housing at Fort Gordon has refused an I-Team interview. Until now. How are your soldiers living? If you can't answer that question, you've taken your eye off the ball. Right. Thursday on News 12 at 6 o'clock. I was hurt in a car wreck. Please. Ross Springer. Follow News 1226 on Instagram to see what's trending in your area. Volunteering is something a lot of people get into as they grow older, but one South Carolina woman started at the age of nine when she grew a 40-pound cabbage and donated that to a soup kitchen. Now her nonprofit has more than 100 gardens across 31 states. Asia Tyler shows us how she's feeding and teaching her community. Sometimes it's the youngest of people who can do the biggest of things to enhance our community. That's the case for 21-year-old Katie Stagliato of Katie's Crops, who's been giving back since the age of nine when she brought home a cabbage seedling from school, which grew to be 40 pounds. That's when Katie decided to take it to a soup kitchen and feed more than 275 people. That day really changed my life because I saw just how many people and families just like mine who had fallen down in hard times. Fast forward to today and Katie's crops last year alone fed more than 18,000 people. But now she has another mission to help nurture and grow the minds of kids in the community through her outdoor classroom and library. We read stories. That was my favorite part. Mine too. For Katie, the classroom was many years in the making and a new opportunity to bring kids into her world of gardening. I think that's something that is so important for kids to learn from a young age where their food comes from and really experimenting with growing their own food and then trying fruits and vegetables. We're also going to be doing math and science classes, arts and crafts classes, yoga classes, cooking classes, just the possibilities are endless, and we really want to just utilize the garden. The new outdoor space is also making parents very happy. I think it's exciting, and I think it's going to be a great benefit to the community to, to get involved, and, and for kids especially to learn new things that they might not otherwise have the opportunity to learn. We had a lot of fun. That's the bottom line. They're having a good time. But you have to rewind that to back when she was nine years old and brought a seedling home from school. So some teacher years ago put a plant in her hand, and that changed her life, really. You know what? That's so great that they're still doing this, because I remember in elementary, my teacher did the same thing, and you know. Yeah, you take it home, you grow it, yeah. mm -hmm. and all kinds of things can develop Very interesting, yep. Riley. Hey, and speaking of growing things,